I have a really dense presentation. I thought I'd ease you in with a video. Notice the date. In four days, nature's gonna rock these people's world. Imagine trying to make sense of this. It's 1906, there's no mass-produced cars yet. This is Market Street in San Francisco. It's anarchy. There's horses, there's cars, there's a trolley. Try to make sense of what's gonna happen in the future. You know that there's change in the air. And that's what we try to do at Radar. Try to figure out what's gonna change and what's gonna stay the same. Let's go down market now, not too many horses, a little more regulation, a little less anarchy, but it's about just as fast. So, Radar has been part of O'Reilly since the beginning. And we've been in front of a lot of trends, including the open source trend. And we do a lot of trend analysis. We really mix a lot of qualitative and quantitative. And we talk to a lot of people. We really have an amazing social network. I know many of the people in the audience, and I've been coming to OSCON since 2003. And we really appreciate all that you guys contribute. So. I'm gonna start with the proposals. So we do a text analysis of them, and we try to look for what's going on. Now we actually make you know, recommendations of what we're looking for, but we still try to extract what's going on. And one of the things we're seeing is a holistic uh, look at cloud. And you'll see that's gonna be supported in some of the later data we show. The other thing that's going on is data is central to the open source story. After open source, it's the second most important term in the proposals. We're happy to see that community is kind of on the rise. We're seeing that more often, and we know that open source is all about community. The biggest rising thing in there is ML and AI, increasingly a part of the uh, equation. And what we'll see in the rest of the data is that there's a lot of maturing going on there. Languages are more in a support role. And I think that what's going on is we're going up the stack, that languages help what's going on, but early OSCONs focus a lot on that. We're now focused more on how to make things. So the learning platform is this great sensor. Um, it's big. So we think that the data is somewhat representative, but there is bias in the data, and it's probably towards large companies. Um, when we look at the uh, industries, almost everyone looks the same. But we also have a mix of people, including business and managers and stuff, that uh, help influence what you're going to see. Now, I'm going to start with search. Search is kind of the id of what we think a platform is doing, like what people are, are, are looking for, obviously, and striving to learn more about. Um, I'm gonna say, think about the maturity, like new things tend to get more uh, looks, and complexity, more complex things require more looks when you look at this data. Search also is a very long tail. Now, I'm gonna be presenting a lot of charts like this, so I just wanna explain it quick. Um, first, there's the term, topic or term. We've got rank, They're usually in a rank order. The magnitude, that's how big it is. So we can see Python is bigger than Java in this slide. And then we've got the rate of change year over year. Green is positive, red is negative. And the scale does change as I show these charts. So these are the top search terms. Remember, there's two million of them. So these are just the top 11. And the first thing to notice is Kubernetes. That's gonna be a story we're gonna be repeating here. It's a very popular growing topic for us. Um, Java, this is all share. Uh, Java share is going down a little bit. Um, it's still a really important language, but it's something we're going to pay attention to. And on the kind of downside, we're seeing ML down and Spark, and we think this is part of the maturing process. Remember, this is search. So we're going to get into um, the, what's moving a lot, the things that we're seeing that have the biggest changes, and the cloud story. So we see a lot going on uh, with cloud and um, the growth there. Helping explain the decline in machine learning is that these two important machine learning topics are getting a little less search traffic. I think people are more engaged. And blockchain is really important. We think a lot of it, but it is faddish, and so it goes up and down in, in engagement. So when we go into deep dive, now we're looking at Python in the context of all sorts of searches, not just those top searches. Um, and what we see here is, again, more evidence about Kubernetes popularity. Cloud native, evidence of the holistic looking at the cloud and people thinking about uh, containers and orchestration and so forth. Um, now, in this case, we're seeing this kind of funny semantic change. AI is becoming a more popular term from a smaller base than machine learning. And the new uh, stuff we have is, is helping support that. And you'll see that in the usage data as well. And from a tiny base, open source is also increasingly showing up there. So uh, people said open source one, we, we just see it more and more. Now we're going to usage. This is more about engagement. 
Uh, so this is actual people in the titles. Uh, and it's based on a taxonomy. And when I show things like Java and Python, they're, they're more complete than in search. So Java includes Spring and all that stuff. JavaScript includes all the frameworks. So security, and we're really happy to see that because we've been trying to promote security in the context of the O'Reilly conferences a lot. And we're seeing that there's good growth there. And you'll see what's kind of behind that. More evidence of the cloud-oriented things growing. And while not growing as high, AI and ML is still on the... Uh, growth side. When we look at the things that are moving up the fast, we see three security-related topics. Um, more evidence of the cloud. I mean, you can see why we put cloud first on that, uh, that first slide. And when we look at what's cooling off, the fad again, uh, dying out a little bit. Um, but the kind of second-tier languages, and as you'll see in the next slide, we see some consolidation going on. And lastly, mobile dev. It's not that people aren't developing for mobile. It's that it's just called development. So these are, this is the languages in rank order. And what we see is that the big three are kind of consolidating uh, uh, usage. And we're looking at Kotlin and Rust as a uh, growing language. So it's kind of something new and something old. C is still hanging in there and still an important and growing uh, language for us. And we just heard a little about Microsoft being part of it. The Microsoft languages are also getting increased traction from a pretty tiny base. Um, this is a little hard to explain, but this is correlated. So if someone is looking at Java, and what other languages do they look at? So in the first case, we have Python, Java would be the next post language. And we noticed something kind of funny here. <laughs> but we also noticed something else kind of funny. When you look at the correlated language, so Python's popular in that way, but it's also the most insular language of these languages in that the next language people look at is Java, but it's a much smaller percentage than the other ones. We're not really sure why, but we have some guesses, and if you have some guesses, let me know. Um, the think is somewhat do with AI and ML, somewhat that it's taught in schools, and somewhat that it's easy to use and that some people are just using uh, Python as kind of a glue, and they're not like full-time programmers, but they're using it to help them get work done. Now, the AIML binding is important, so I'm just back to search for this one slide, and then we look at the deep dive, how many searches for Python, Java, and JavaScript include ML and AI terms, and Python is an order of magnitude more presence there. And clearly, it's the popular language for most of the uh, bindings and work that people are doing in machine learning. So let's talk a little more about machine learning, and here's more evidence of that um, semantic shift where we see AI growing a lot and, and machine learning shrinking. And, and they're all, the other ones are all down, but we see natural language processing as, uh, in a way, uh, staying, holding its ground. We think NLP is going to be something that people are going to increasingly use machine learning um, for. And just for what it's worth, we're also seeing kind of a shift in what people are looking at. PyTorch is growing, reinforcement uh, is growing from small bases. This is part of the, ma the maturity story uh, that we see. So this is a bunch of cloud things put together on usage. And we see evidence, we saw it in the proposals and here, of migration, monolith to microservices going on. So we see, we're seeing the growth there. Now, we see an inverse relationship between the smaller of the big three cloud providers uh, growing faster and stuff, but it's clearly a big, a big pool and a uh, rising tide, and everyone is uh, growing a lot. And um, I gave a lot of data, so I thought I should summarize it quickly. Um, open source is everywhere. Uh, when I did the search terms, 11 of the, four, uh, no, 11 of the top 14 search terms were open source. If you looked at usage, it was mostly around open source. This, we have a paper on Next Architecture coming out soon, covering what we're seeing around this holistic approach to the cloud. We have the big three languages. We're paying attention to Kotlin and Rust to see the traction they get. Python is different, and that's, you know, of course, interesting to us. While we see AI and ML in a kind of a plateau from an engagement, we know that people are moving more towards production, and that's an increasingly part of the OSCON and ops and all sorts of worlds, and that Microsoft is still in the mix.